Sharpologist.com. You're listening to Wet Shaving Talk, powered by Sharpologist.com, where we're dedicated to preserving the art and skill of classic shaving. I'm your host, Joe Burley, and today's February 4th, 2019. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Happy belated Groundhog's Day and Super Bowl Sunday. For all of you recovering from Super Bowl, I hope this podcast finds you well. And if you called out sick from work, well, enjoy the cast. And uh, yeah, send, send some emails out or, or start buy some shave gear or look at some stuff because uh, it's a free day for you. And don't worry, I won't tell. All right, guys, today on the show, we have an email from Steve, a very nice email from Steve regarding a shave kit for kids. Uh, last week, I asked for some ideas on a little baby uh, shave kit, like with a little plastic razor. I've seen a couple of them online and stuff like that. Uh, as you guys know, I am having a little boy coming up in my life. We'll be here in May. So I'm looking very forward to having my first child with my wife, and we are we are very excited, and lots of things happening in our, our life right now, moving and all that good stuff. So we are... Um, you know, very excited. And this is the first, real one of the first gifts I want to give him when he gets older is a little like little baby shave kit. And Steve sent me a beautiful kit and a nice story as well. So I'd like to tell you guys all about it. Uh, the Big Shave Southwest is coming up in April. It is going to be held in Arizona this year. And I have some more information on that if you're interested. There's going to be like a day trip and everything like that. You don't want to miss it if you're in that area or if you can make it. It's usually one of the bigger shave events of the year, so it's very cool. I've been to one. I've, I've been very fortunate to been been able to go to one of them, and it, they are a lot of fun. Uh, so it's been quiet with collectors and artisans out there. Haven't seen too many new releases, very, very seldom, other than a few on um, you know West Coast Shaving has been having a lot of them and everything like that from artisans. But are the prices dropping down in collectibles too? I'm going to tell you my thoughts and my findings because I, I research the market quite often especially on eBay, and I've been noticing a lot of the big big names have been going down in price. So is now the time to buy? You'll just have to listen. Uh, also, a t-shirt giveaway from Janice Razors as well. And if, you have, if you're unfamiliar with Janice Razors, uh, it's time to become familiar with them because they are making a type of toggle razor, Gillette toggle, uh, basically... Um, not like a replica. It's actually with all new new equipment and new technology, making it an, an old idea with new technology. They look great. It's kind of more of like a tribute razor to them. Uh, we have a T-shirt giveaway and a little contest at the end of the show that we can everybody can participate in and um, have some fun with it. So, without further ado, guys, let's get on with the show. All right. So we talk. I I had an email from Steve regarding the shave kit for kids when I was asking for a few ideas. And he sent me this awesome kit or this a, a link to this awesome kit for children three and up, right? It's like a dop kit. It has a dop bag. It has a mirror. It has a comb, a hair dryer, an electric razor, hair clippers, a regular razor, like a cartridge type razor with no blades in it, of course, and a brush, soap, everything like that, or a whole kit. It's from LakeshoreLearning.com. They actually have quite a few stores in the United States if you're around here. About 60 stores, he said. But the email was more, basically it was more important to me. It was more of an impact to me than the actual product itself, which is awesome because I think I'm going to end up getting this. So Steve wrote to me. He said, uh, his for Christmas, it was his four-year-old was giving uh, the first shave kit. It was given the, shit, the, the, the kit, right? The first shave kit. And... Uh, he was telling me how his wife was able to take a video of him teaching her how to shave like daddy. He loaded the brush and it was like like in the pomade tub, so he used the wrong one. And then showed her the steps of a two-pass shave. And he was, uh, you know, Steve was mentioning how very proud he was of his of his little one. I can tell you right now that that was pro- that was an awesome story because just to see your little little your little son or or daughter, you know, shave just like you, and and he was teaching mommy how to shave like. <laughs> Like dad, with his new little kit, and using the you know it, it's just it's amazing how how little kids pick up everything we do, and Steve uh, with his uh, actually has you know several children. Uh, great story, Steve. I really appreciate you sharing this this story the the story and the kit because I think I really love that kit. And I think it's awesome, and also I think it's really special that your son is watching you and remembering everything, and at four years old is already starting to get into it. So who knows when he gets older? Will he be running? Maybe he'll even have his own wet shaving podcast or 
a blog or something like that. Start them off young, guys, because that's what I plan on doing, or at least trying to. Uh, great story, Steve. Thank you very much for sharing. It was um, it was really made me smile, and it was a great, great email. I'll be keeping that in the in the in the file just in case I ever have a bad day and I'll re- read something nice. So thank you very much for sharing that. And if you guys are checking out Lakeshore Learning, check out the picture in the show notes. This is a really intense kit. If you have a, about a three or four year old that's really starting to get into watching you shave every day or watching or getting into it, this is a great way to start practicing, right? Never too early to start. So there's other kits out there, but I think this is probably the most detailed kit I've ever seen. I've seen a couple on Amazon. I even seen a few, I think, you know, on eBay as well. I haven't seen any in any brick and mortar stores, but there's a Lakeshore Learning, uh, several of them around. So check them out if you're by there. And hey, buy the kit for the little ones. All right, guys, the Big Shave Southwest is coming April 27, 2019. That's right, in, in Arizona. It has been announced, okay? So check it out at Big Shave, what is it, southwest.com. Yes, sorry, it goes to like bigshaveeast.com, the link, but you can just click on the link in the show notes. It'll take you. It says Big Shave East, but it goes to Big Shave Southwest. All right, so a couple other things going on. They are doing a road trip to Tombstone, Arizona. That's right. Uh, two days before the event. So if you're in town early, okay, for about 30 bucks, you can go on a road trip. They're, they're going to rent a van and have donuts and coffee and everything like that. Everybody gets to sit together and talk and everything. They're going to Tombstone, the historic area of, of Arizona. And he's going to hit up a Boot Hill Cemetery, some other reenactments. They're going to see a museum, salon. I mean, this looks like a really cool trip. I really wish I can go on this trip. I'm going to be honest with you guys because... It looks like fun. The road trip alone looks like an awesome time. Plus the the shave meet up a couple days later. If I could make it, I would this year, um, but I will not be able to attend any any shave meetups until probably next year. And I just wish you guys all the best of luck who go and take a lot of pictures. Because let me tell you, I've been to these events. They're a lot of fun. You get to see all the people you talk to online all the time. And see him in person and get to meet him in person. And I, I don't think there's a there's a mean soul in the bunch. I can tell you that much. Everybody was just so friendly in the last event that I went to. It was just great. So if you're in the area, if you can make it, guys, hit this up. And if you can, I would hit up that trip too. Because I'm sure seating is limited. But it looks like a lot of fun. All right, guys. And I hate to say it. It's been quiet out there. It really has been quiet. And it was a struggle trying to find stuff to talk about this week, new in the wet shaving world. I think we've hit a kind of a quiet time, which happens here and there in hobbies and happens here and there in industries. This has been the quietest it's been in wet shaving in a long time. We've had, there were several releases that came out last month in January. But since basically since around, I'd say November ish, it's been slowing down quite a bit. And I could tell you, you know, why my reasons and stuff like that but let's talk about real what what i think the reason is why they're slowing down or we can just talk about real facts the facts are this uh the january was the fewest new releases i've seen since i've been doing uh the podcast and basically since 2015 uh this the few releases we did have we had some new vendors like mammoth soaps had, mammoth soaps had a release a declaration just had a release a couple of days ago and a couple other comp- a couple other artisans have had uh, Talbot had a release. Most of them have been being released on West Coast Shaving, and they've been selling out quickly. So that is still the demand is still there for the sm- slow releases. But the eBay business has been going down tremendously since I've noticed in the last actually two months. I've seen razors that would usually go for about six to seven hundred dollars go for about three to four hundred dollars. Uh, also on um, you know Facebook, it's dropped down a lot on the BST as well. Now, why is this? Okay, I think that a lot of these prices get skewed by several collectors who get into the, the hobby and start overpaying for things. Okay, we talked about vintage Gillettes going last year, you know, two or three years ago, going for two or three thousand dollars each and then being resold for only a thousand recently, or a BBS one going for you know a certain amount of money now only going for about you know maybe 20 percent less. It's because I think that a lot of collectors skew the market partially and i wouldn't say everybody would but i say say this if you have 20 guys and 20 guys in the industry that are buying things at a, at a at a premium and don't care and they spend the money they can actually start a trend now i'll tell you where the trends start the trends start usually on facebook facebook is is really like the wild west of the white shaving world in the forums there's really 
there's a lot of rules and regulations on forums, right? You have a lot of uh, moderators saying, yeah, you can't overprice this. You, we don't charge this. I, I can tell you right now that there was a time in wet shaving for you newbies out there who've only been doing this a couple of years when you used to go on BSTs and find things for less than new. All right. The BST on, on Badger and Blade or Shave, you know, the um, Straight Razor Place or Shave Den, when those were the really the three big ones back in the day, when they were the three big, big, um, sorry, forums. They, you go online, if you were looking for something, you wouldn't pay full price for it because you weren't allowed to. You would have to actually have something that was affordable. So say you bought a, a feather razor for $17 and you wanted to resell it. You would go in there, it would be probably about, you know, 14 or 15 bucks. You know, that was a way to share things on the BST. Now today, recently, it's gone up and it's now people are selling things for 20 to 30% more. I think that, and then everybody's like, oh, I want that, I want that. All these new guys come into the hobby with, um, you know, some deep pockets and they come out and they start realizing after about six months that, hey, I just spent several thousand dollars on wet shaving stuff and, you know, I'm not really into it anymore or I just, I found what I really like and I just need this one razor. I don't need all this stuff or it's just sitting there or I just bought this all because of impulse and then they start selling it. And then that's when you see you know, new guys come in and some disappear, right? If you've been doing this for a long time, you've been in this hobby, you've seen it in every aspect of it. This is what brings trends up and down. Right now we're in a downtrend. I think everybody's kind of slowing down. A lot of people, you know, those collectors have what they need and there's really nothing new coming out. There hasn't been a new razor company yet, right, that came out with any new double edges. Uh, very seldom are there any new straight razors coming out. And when they do, they usually sell out quickly, but there just hasn't been much going on. So... Are are we seeing the end of the overpriced hard to get gear? Are are we seeing the end of this? Uh, I would say yes, we are. We're starting to see the, the the turn, and it's going to be a little bit of a different game, I guess. And I think we're going to start going back to possibly 2010, 2008 pricing. And it, like I said, for you guys who were around then, there was only several razor, razors really getting a premium back then, like the bottom dial, the toggle, you know, some double rings from Gillette. You know, there wasn't really too many new items. But what's happening now, it's just like, I guess people are like, eh, you know what, I'll, I'll pass or I'm not going to sell my stuff. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm collect it. But, you know, just the other day, I saw Wolfman Razor go for $400 on eBay when I could tell you a year ago or even six months ago, that same Razor probably would have gone for six or $700 at auction. And it went for basically retail now. So it's happening. Can we stop it? Can we can we predict what's going to happen more in the future? No, but I can say that... Um, you know, that group, the certain group of people that start buying all that stuff, they'll come back. You'll see another group come. Every year it happens the same thing. But it's a lot of it's. I'm sorry to go back to my original point. A lot of it starts on Facebook because there's no regulation. You can sell for whatever you want on Facebook on the forums. You know the moderators are going to get kind of angry or upset, and might might cancel your post if you're really overcharging something. So. I think that the trend the last two years or the trend of overpricing and stuff like that might be coming to an end. You might start seeing stuff on the BST for an actual bargain because that's used to be where, why would I buy anything off the BST if I'm paying full price? The only time I buy you know soaps or anything like that if I'm getting a deal, right? You would at least have to save 10 to 15% on something used, which I would think would be pretty fair if not less. And stuff to sell on the BST wasn't really to profit. It was really to sell just to get rid of it or let somebody else try it, right? I think that's where we're coming back to, and I think in the next couple of months we'll we'll be the we'll be the factor on how that's happening, and if if it really is happening, if we are going back to 2008, 2010 pricing. So if you have any thoughts on that, I would definitely love to hear from you. Send me an email, joe.wetshavingnews at gmail.com, because it is something that I'd like to talk to more about wet shavers. If you've been around a long time, if you've only been around for a few months, that's fine. Just let me know what your thoughts are, and if you see anything, if you see the same, because I've seen some forum posts the same thing. It's like. It's been quiet out there. There's nothing going on. Now, on an artisan point of view, a lot of artisans are like probably sitting there saying, "Man, you know, I'm running out of ideas. I've come out with five, you know, five different scents, five, six, seven, seven different ideas, and this comes to a time where it's like, okay, I got to start, you know, doing something else, or I have to start building on my core brands, you know. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I, I'm sorry to keep going on about this, but this is really a big deal. You look at the craft beer industry, all right? Remember, I'm in the alcohol business. I sell wine for a living. I work in a very large store that sells everything, right? Uh, craft beer has been down for the last two years. And we're actually going from five years ago expanding craft beer, 
right? Expanding Isles of Crap Bear to this year, we're actually going to dis to to um, actually take away Isles of Craft Beer. We're actually going to decrease the space of craft beer and open up for whiskey. So you can see trends are changing. Five years ago, you would have never have said that. We were up 25, 30% in sales, and craft beer as an industry has been going up, right? And now this year, it's been dropping 10 to 15%. A lot of people are going to breweries. There's a lot. There's breweries. I mean, to five years ago, six years ago, there's only one brewery in my town. Now there's, uh, I think there's eight, you know, and all that stuff. So it's just people are going to breweries and said they don't want to go. In, and people get fed up with paying twelve, thirteen dollars for a six pack. I look at it as like, I see the similar trend with shaving, wet shaving. You know, sometimes people are going to get fed up paying twenty five, thirty dollars for a soap. You know, they're going to just maybe not want to buy that. And that's when you got to be careful artisans because if you get too much into your to your rut or too much into your routine of thinking you're going to sell out you know 50 soaps at 25 30 dollars i would be careful because as with the craft beer industry and again it's different but it's really the same because it's disposable income it's not necessity uh, a lot of people are going back to drinking the regular stuff because hey who wants to spend 12 dollars on a six pack of beer when you can get you know eight dollars for a 12 pack of beer right and that's when those guys like True and Hill and Hill and and um, you know all those big names, Art of Shaving and stuff like that. Maybe not Art of Shaving, but that's those guys survive this kind of type of time, right? Because they're big and they have it, and their prices are set. You know, they're expensive, but they're there, right? And that's when you start seeing the artisans. Well, they run out of ideas and they start shutting down shop. You know, last year we had quite a few artisans shut down, but you know, quite a few open up too. So that's just my thought on the whole thing. I don't see the trend. I don't see wet shaving ever getting back down to where it was, but I do see it slowing down a bit. And I think that regular gear is going to be a big deal this year. I also think that the collectible stuff will come back about probably about in March, March or April when uh, tax time comes and people have a little bit extra money. You know, you're going to see the like we talked about in the first two shows of the year, the trends. I still think you're going to see those items going up in price. They're still selling like crazy. There's tons of want to buy ads for that. You're going to see those, but I don't think it's going to be as many as it's been in the in the past. Just my thoughts. Love for you to share your thoughts as well. Uh, send me an email at joe.whatshavingnews at gmail.com with your thoughts as well, and we'll talk about it. All right, guys, we have a T-shirt giveaway. That's right, a T-shirt giveaway from Janice Razors. If you are unfamiliar with Janice Razors, it's time to become familiar with them. It is a Made in the USA Gillette Toggle Tribute razor that's... Uh, Eric from uh, the owner of the company has spent probably hundreds of hours developing. This was a not an easy task for him. He went through it and he's trying to do modern technology with CNC machining with an old technique that was made in bulk by uh, machines that were really meant to make those razors, right? From Gillette. And believe it or not, when I was taught, when I was just sending, you know, sending, we were sending emails back and forth, you know, for, for a while and then kind of went quiet. And just recently, I started uh, speaking to him again. I didn't realize how hard it was to build something that was built in the masses back 50 years ago. It's pretty intense on how difficult and how much tech, how advanced machining was and, and production and uh, just all that good stuff was back in the 60s and how we're using computers and stuff and still having a hard time replicating what they did without their machines. So Janice Razors, he's, he's got some really cool pictures of prototypes on the website. And he was very kind, Eric was very kind, to send me some t-shirts to give away. So here's a chance for you guys to win a shirt. All right, all you have to do is send me a picture of your shave, then, no matter how big or small. And if I feature you on the show, depending on how many I get, I will send you a picture. Oh, not a picture, I'm sorry. I will send you a t-shirt, all right? And I will share your picture, all right? So send me an email at joe.wetshavingnews at gmail.com with a picture of your shave then and a little bit of a story that I can share. And if I feature you on the show, you will get a shirt. I will send you an email back and say and ask for some shipping information. And I'll send you a brand new Janice t uh, Razors t-shirt. All right, so really cool giveaway. Thank you, Eric, from Janice Razors, as this is a very nice and kind gesture to do for the show. And uh, if you haven't checked them out, guys, check them out at JaniceRazors.com. All right, everyone, that concludes our show for this week. Thank you for listening as always. And remember, our show is powered by sharpologist.com, which your father didn't teach you about shaving. Special thanks to all of you guys, the listeners. Without you, there would be no podcast and no wet shaving industry. That's right. 
and Mark aka Mantic59 for everything that he does for the Wet Shaving community and uh, for the support he gives our show. Don't forget to check out my blog site, shavestraightandsafe.com, and check out, feel free to contact me at joe.wetshavingnews at gmail.com with any questions or anything you'd like to see shared on the show or anything you'd like to share on the show. Uh, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel and, as always, remember to shave straight and shave safe. Bye-bye now.